February 1st, 1960, Greensboro, North Carolina. Four North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University students, Ezel Blair Jr., Franklin McCain, Joseph McNeil, and David Richmond, all would partake in a new form of nonviolent civil rights protests. The sit-in. This would make them famous and gain them their rights. This is their story. Ezel Blair Jr., son of a civil rights activist, he was inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Franklin McCain attended the same high school as Blair, but then moved to D.C. He has no relation at all to John McCain. Well, uh, that's, that's Joseph McNeil. Now, uh, here's, here's David, Richmond, uh, riding on in. Y'all got any ointment? No, yeah. man. I mean, I've been sitting on this, this chair for about seven months. I could, I could get you some. My, my aunt runs a It's, it's more of a stool. I know. Oh, uh, we don't have uh, stool. Either. McNeil! Oh. Hey, how you doing? Pretty bad. I walked about three miles. What? Why? Why? That's absurd. Well, they didn't let me ride a Greyhound bus. Why? Well, golly gee, I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> This will not stand. I've got it. We have to disobey. Civilly. <sighs> Wait. Sit, Sit in. in. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You just re-raced it though! Sit in! Oh my god! We are going to sit in! And so, with that revelation, the Greensboro Four came up with the idea of a sit-in. A form of civil disobedience where certain members of a discriminated race will sit in an area previously off-limits to them. Using this idea, the Greensboro Four then went into their local Woolworths the next day to test the idea and to fight for their basic rights. Well, if we're going to do this, we need to be well-dressed. Walking 
fast, face this path and I'm homebound. Staring blankly ahead, just making a way, making a way through the crowd. And I need you. I am Michael Meaden. We walked into Woolworths and sat down at the white only lunch counter. We looked at the waitress and asked for service. We'd like to be served, please. No! It was incredibly difficult at times. Those bystanders would often jeer and make rude comments toward us in an effort to get us to leave the establishment. You get, get, get out of here, you, you y young youths, you well-dressed. Uh, just makes makes me so mad. Here, you let me fix this. Ah, uh, what are you? I don't like this. This is different. Uh, 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 you're very tense. Uh, what, what, at one point during the sitting, an old lady came up to the lunch counter and sat with us. <laughs> she said she was disappointed. I am disappointed in you. Why is that, ma'am? Because it took you so long to do this. God, Jesus Christ! My hip! Guys, someone call an ambulance! No, no, seriously, like, stop the recording. After I need refusing ambulance. to leave after the waitress told us to, the manager was called in. Now, I believe that my waitress asked you find gentlemen to exit my establishment. You know, it's a fine place I run here, and I do give the Negro people a place to eat in the basement. Nice and cool down there. If you wouldn't mind doing me a favor and exiting this bar for the white citizens who have the right to be here, I would be forever grateful. I want my grits, though. Shut up! <laughs> Ain't no grits gonna be served to you here. You get your grits downstairs, all right? All right, thank you. Now, I would like you four to exit. Would that be all right? But the grits... Jesus Christ! You've come and done what you needed to do, but the store is closed now. You hear me? The store's closed. So get your butts out that door before I get someone to move your butts out that door. Go on. Get out now. Get on. Move it. That's right. Good night, sir. We'll be back tomorrow. Indeed, returned that next day, and the day after that. And by the third day, our numbers had grown to about 60, with one third of us being women. By but that third day, members of the local KKK showed up. <laughs> Racism. Not even once. Get get out get out my town By the end of February the sit-in movement had spread 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 to over 30 cities in 8 states including sympathy strikes in New York By the end of March over 2000 letters have been sent to local governments 73% of which in favor of integration You've got mail! You've oh, got dark. mail! Oh, there's a so many letters! As if 73% are in favor of non-racism! Oh.
July 21st, 1960, the manager of Woolworth came to us with a compromise. So I've been thinking um, about how you kids have been trying hard to uh, push this equal rights. Now, I have uh, considered that we will have, we will, we will give rather service to all well dressed, you well dressed, and properly behaved individuals. I hereby decree. We want to be served in this establishment, like all the white folk. There's a very nice cafe down down the street, you know, for we, black folks. We want to be served here. But why? We're here to stand up for civil rights. Well, I do hate to admit it, but I'd say you've earned your right. I'll get you gentlemen something to try. Mr. Richmond, Mr. McNeil, Mr. Blair, Mr. McCain. Good job. Being Lyndon B. Johnson sure is hard. Bill Pee, Mr. President. Oh, well, thank, thank you, thank you. Your bath is ready. Bath time. And that's the story of the Greensboro Forum. Over 70,000 participated. While over 3,000 were arrested. It culminated into one of the most effective civil rights protests. We finally reached our goal. What was that for? I just don't like you.